create some lines that can be used as guides as we walk our students through how to make the Eiffel Tower. Now, of course, if you have older children, you can allow for them to make this dividing line. Um, I'm just splitting the paper in a half, um, vertically and then horizontally. Um, if you have younger children, this might be something that you want to do in advance. Uh, or if you only have maybe 30 minutes for this lesson. I've done this uh, in an after school program. We, I do 30 minute drawing lessons and so this is something that I can easily be done in a 30, 30 minute time frame. Now I'm going to be using pen but I always have the students work with um, pencil. And my first instruction would be right at the line where the two lines intersect. You're going to make a um, a rectangle that is about two, one to two finger spaces on each side of the line. And again, you can um, decide whether or not you want them to practice free drawing or to actually use a ruler. For my classes, I've just had them free draw. And then I say the same thing, about two to three finger lengths below that rectangle, you need to make a line of a rectangle a little larger than the rectangle you just created. And again, this can easily turn into a math lesson by giving them actual um, um, dimensions of how wide and how long you want the rectangles to be. Next, I would instruct them to put a small rectangle right above um, or right below the first tick line that you made to create um, this graph. And so then I would refer to the other two rectangles and I would say smaller than this rectangle and smaller than this rectangle. So in essence, it'd be small, medium, and large. Then they can go ahead and look and just based on that instruction, they can make the adjustice, adjustments that they need to make in order to have that um, the small, medium, large rectangle. So I'm making the adjustments as well. Now we're forming what almost looks like a letter A, and we're doing it in the following way. We're going to make a line that connects from this medium-sized rectangle to the larger rectangle, and then we're going to make a parallel line. And we're going to do this on both sides. And this is one of those um, drawing lessons that even if they don't do it perfectly, it will still look nice when we're all finished with it. Again, still thinking about that visual of making it look like a letter A, you're going to then take, um, uh, make a line from the largest rectangle all the way down um, to almost the bottom, maybe about an inch from the bottom of the piece of paper. And then again, draw a parallel line to meet it and do this on both sides. Now I have them use this line right here that is our dividing line um, vertically as our guide to do this next part of the drawing. So I have them follow the line all the way down and then about an inch before it meets, I have them cross over with that line. And then again, a, almost a parallel line coming down to meet it. And then this line is already here, so we'll do the same on this side. So we have an upside down V that's left in the middle. Now I have them put an antenna up top and a dome. So a dome and then a little antenna at the top. Next we're going to start to create X's all the way down. Now 
and then we're going to do it on both sides. Now we're going to continue down with those X's again on both sides. Now when you get to about to the middle of the bottom half of this of the Eiffel Tower, make another rectangle and then keep going. And same on both sides. Now going back to each of the rectangles, go ahead and make vertical lines in each of those rectangles. Now Make uh, what I would call a dome or maybe a, a C laying on the side that connects those two small rectangles. And then make an X, one large X in the middle. Now I invite the students to make some sort of skyline. I've had students make this a starry night. I've had some students put balloons in the sky. Same thing with the landscape. They can do that however they like. And then of course the option is just to leave it as is um, after taking out the, um, sorry, the dividing lines that we used as our guides. And as you can see, because, well I should take that back. One more thing you need to do, I forgot that I'm the one that actually did with a black pen. You can have them trace over it with a black pen And as you can see, it actually looks quite nice just like this. Or you can decide to have them uh, color with marker or watercolor paint or um, with crayons.